Tashi Dele, hello. Uh, sending a video message right now to all of our friends and supporters and allies in the struggle uh, rather than a written message because it just feels like an important moment to talk directly. Um, as the genocide games close in Beijing this weekend, and I'm wearing my old Team Tibet gear and have just been probably like a lot of you thinking a lot about 2008 and the uprising in Tibet and the protests that we carried out in China itself in Beijing during the games and the protests that we all carried out in the streets during the torch relay and at every opportunity that we could um, at that time and just reflecting on how much things have changed and you know, at that time, a whole new generation of Tibetans came out and challenged the Chinese government at the moment that they wanted silence and they wanted no dissent, no sign of trouble. And Tibetans changed history. And it was an uh, awe-inspiring to witness. Uh, and of course, the crackdown was swift and brutal. And the now the total lockdown of Tibet and the information blackout and um, China's escalating repression inside Tibet is devastating and it's so difficult, I think, for all of us um, in this moment. As, of course, these games happen even in spite of the genocide in uh, East Turkestan or what China calls Xinjiang, the crushing of democracy in Hong Kong, the crushing of civil society in China itself, the threatening of democratic Taiwan. You know, I guess the, the thing that we can say for sure is in 2008, Tibetans were trying to say, this is who China is, this is the Chinese government is, um, don't believe this Olympic lie. And now I think the world kind of gets it. Um, certainly many, many more governments and people do. And as bad as it is and as difficult a time as this is, we have new cross-movement solidarity with so many groups and peoples. The last thing Xi Jinping wants is Tibetans working together with Uyghurs and Hong Kongers and Chinese rights activists and Southern Mongolians and Taiwanese and um, and there, look in the streets, this campaign, there's a, there's a whole new generation of young Tibetans and, and people who have taken up the struggle and they've been doing what needs to be done and they've been doing direct actions and they, um, you know, they're, they're leading us forward. And that is a reason to hope and looking inside Tibet, even though it's, it's harder on some, you know, so many levels to get the information out, Tibetans inside are still fighting. They're still resisting. They're writing, they're singing, they're speaking, they're fighting for their rights in whatever ways that they can in, in spite of the unbelievable climate of repression that they live in every single day. And we know that they're, you know, where their heart is and where their allegiance is and that they still, um, you know, want to worship His Holiness the Dalai Lama openly and go to the monasteries and send, you know, their, to keep their children at home and live on their lands and all of the rights and freedoms they're still struggling for inside, we've got to keep pushing on the outside. And it's up to us to keep um, the struggle alive and, and carry it forward. And with, with the new solidarity between our groups and between movements, and in this post-Olympic period, as the world understands more who China is under Xi Jinping, and, and um, you know, where there's opportunity for us and as a movement and I think this is the time now we come together we work hard we uh, we have to be creative and as long as Tibetans inside are still there we're still here fighting for them um, and so I just uh, I wanted to thank everyone who's been working with us all this time and um, I look forward to working with you in the coming days and weeks and months and we're going to seize all the opportunities and we are going to keep our eyes on the prize thanks